Hello today, I am revealing our kitchen remodel. This is June and we started January 9th in 2023. So we had a really, really nice kitchen in this new house that we moved into, but I almost didn't buy this house just because of this kitchen. I knew that this kitchen was gonna be a huge problem when we moved in. I knew it from the start, but of course, <laughs> everyone was like, well, you can always remodel the kitchen. You can't find a different property. <laughs> well, okay, that's true, <laughs> but it's not quite as easy as that. And so <laughs> we put it off, but really this kitchen was very difficult to work in. It was very beautiful, had gorgeous cabinets. They worked really well. They were really high quality cabinets, but most of the kitchen I only had about 12 to 15 inches workspace to prep things. I did have one longer countertop where I did my baking, but it really wasn't convenient. Like when we went to go get stuff out of the refrigerator, there was nowhere to set it on a counter anywhere or to put up stuff in the refrigerator. We had nowhere to set it on the counter. So this kitchen functionally really did not work. And this bar was awful. It just cut up the entire bar. So you really couldn't use any of the bar. And while it was really nice to have the dishwasher up high, it really wasn't functional to have all of this bar space that we really couldn't use. So I kept threatening to take a chainsaw to it. And <laughs> poor Mike, he was like, I think it might have been easier just to hear you complaining you're going to take a chainsaw to it instead of uh, remodeling, but <laughs> live and learn, I guess. But anyway, um, so how did I start this process? Well, I found a fellow YouTuber, Mark Tobin Kitchen Design. You guys need to go check him out. As I was looking at kitchen designs, he had some really good ideas and he agreed to do a collab with me. And you can see those videos. I'll put them in the link in the description below. And so that's kind of where I started with the plans. Then I kept looking for different plans and the plans he had were a really good start, but they still weren't quite working. I knew it still wouldn't quite work for what we wanted. And so we moved the refrigerator all different places, trying to find the best place to put the refrigerator. We couldn't find a good place to put the refrigerator. I wanted to reuse the cabinets because they're super, super nice and expensive. And so I didn't see a need to spend $20,000 on new cabinets when I already had cabinets that were really nice. Although I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. I spent about three or four months going over kitchen designs. And then I paid Mark, even though before he did the kitchen designs for free for me as part of the collab, um, I paid him to redraw again, more designs. <laughs> And I was getting a little bit closer. And even the week before we were supposed to start the remodel, I still didn't have any designs. And I went to the cabinet shop here to try and find replacement cabinets for a couple of holes that we were gonna have. And she did a new design for me. And then I went to the countertop place here in town and he did another design for me. And the week before we were supposed to start, I still didn't have a design. So literally three days, the weekend before they were supposed to start, I think they were starting on a Monday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, my poor kids were like, mom, you're just going in circles in the kitchen. What are you doing? And I just sat there with my notebook and my tape measure and I just kept measuring and redrawing and measuring and redrawing and trying to figure out where stuff was gonna go because I kind of thought I needed plans before the contractor got here um, to see where stuff should go. And so I just wrote out all my plans. Now we did have one thing that we knew that we wanted to do that the contractor hadn't bid on and we wanted to add a pantry. And Mike's brilliant idea was to take out a hallway and put in a pantry where that hallway used to be. And so I did a whole nother video on how we did the pantry and how I um, organized and set up the pantry. I did two videos on those two things. And so you can go check those out also. I always wanted to have a walk-in pantry in my kitchen. Our food currently was in the laundry room in an extra cabinet that the former owners had put in there. 
And so I just wanted everything in the kitchen. Then I started looking at ideas on what I wanted. And we happened to go into this little tiny mercantile in Dayton, Wyoming, this little teensy tiny old fashioned mercantile is like one, it's like the only store in town, I think. I don't know, there's not very many, st there's not hardly anything in this town. It's super tiny, like 200 people. And so we went into this little mercantile and they had this kitchen. I'm like, that's the kitchen I want right there. That's exactly my vision. And so I took pictures while we were in there and that was the first vision that I was going off of. And then I saw this other vision in a magazine and I really liked the colors in this magazine and the way they worked. And of course, I just had other inspiration ideas of what we wanted to do. And then we had the big problem of, do we keep the sink in the bar island or do we put it under the window? Cause I had two sinks. I had one under the window and I had one in the bar and I didn't need two sinks. We went back and forth and back and forth. And then we were watching a movie and I was like, oh, stop. Let me take a picture of that. That is the setup of our kitchen. And let me see if I think that might work. Cause I'm a very visual person. I can't just come up with things out of my head. Everything I do comes from an idea somewhere else. And I usually bounce off of that. And when I saw this, I was like, oh wow. I really like that bar. I don't like the kitchen sink breaking up the middle of the bar. I want that for prep space. And then I really liked the color, so I kept finding different ideas and different things on Pinterest and YouTube and all of them I liked, but they just weren't quite what I wanted. And so I just kind of kept looking. And then I also had to decide on colors really quick, or not really quick, but I mean, I had to get colors decided because we decided to go ahead and reuse the kitchen cabinets that we have and paint them. Well, that was gonna be one of the first things that the contractor did was paint the cabinets. So I really had to get my decision made on my colors. And so I finally got what I thought was a layout for the kitchen and got my colors and everything picked out. And literally all of this happened the day before the contractors came. Even the morning the contractors were coming, I was in with my plans making sure that this is what I thought I wanted. So then the Sunday before the contractors came, we got in and had to unload everything from the kitchen. All right, we're getting everything unloaded. Oh my goodness, can you say disaster? See, it's, it's the bad before the good, right? The bad before the good. And we had this huge disaster then. <laughs> And this was gonna be our life for the next five months. So when the contractors came, I had my plans all laid out on the countertop, ready to show them what to do. Now, for the price, when we talked to the contractors, we got two different estimates. They told me about $20,000. They told Mike about ten dollars to $15,000 for just the kitchen for the labor. And we were like, okay. And we decided to do on an hourly basis and so instead of a full project, because we had added the pantry, they weren't expecting the pantry. And I did warn them and they said, no, just tell us when we get there. So we were like, okay. When we got here, they were like, well, we really want to be done by April 1st because that's, we do lawn mowing and landscaping. And so we want to be done by April 1st so that that won't interfere getting your kitchen done. We were like, okay, yeah, I, that's fine. He thought, the contractor told me he thought it would take three weeks to get done. I was expecting eight weeks. And so on January 9th, we got started. The oven from Satan is leaving <laughs> us. This is a glorious moment for Tara right there. Oh yay, I am so excited. <laughs> that oven gone, I hate that oven. We were so encouraged when the kitchen teardown started because it just happened so fast. There was four of them working and they got the kitchen torn down everything out of there really quick and we were totally shocked at how quick the kitchen got torn down but we very quickly ran into problems the first problem was we had decided to go ahead and just use the kitchen sink under the window and put a great big window in and when they took down the cabinets. They found 
a vent pipe right in the middle of where the window was supposed to go. And so we spent a good amount of time with the contractors getting in the attic, going downstairs, telling, tearing holes in the ceiling downstairs, trying to figure out where this vent pipe was from, where it was going, if it was, you know, what it was used for to see, you know, what we needed. And in the end, we ended up having to tear basically that whole wall off to get this vent pipe moved. And we thought this was going to be the biggest of our problems. At first, we were like, oh man, that's really bad. <laughs> Little did we know <laughs> as we went along, this was actually just a minor hiccup, this vent pipe. So we called the plumbers and they actually were able to come out the next day. We were totally shocked and move the vent pipe for us. And they had it all moved and done. And it was like, I think $1,200 just to get it moved and everything. And it was all done in like two hours. I can't remember the price for sure. When I do how much our kitchen remodel uh, costs video, I'll tell you for sure. I can't remember, but it really wasn't near as much as we thought it would be. But we were able to get that vent pipe moved. And then they had the most glorious moment when they cut down the bar that I absolutely hated. <laughs> I just was so ecstatic to see this layered bar go away. I was so happy. <laughs> And then they got set up in the garage for painting the cabinets. Now, during this time, I was going to the restore almost every day, not quite every day, but probably four to five times a week, I was going to the restore because I knew that I needed more cabinets for some holes that we were gonna have. And so I knew that when we took out the oven that was in the corner, we were gonna have a hole here and a hole up here, and we were gonna need to fill it with something. Here at the ReStore, and I found this kitchen set that matches mine. So I'm gonna see if I can get pieces that will match my set to fill in for the remodel in January. Okay, so here's my kitchen cabinet right here. And look at this. Wow, that is a really super close. So I think I'm about to save myself a thousand bucks. I'm super excited. Yay. So I was going to get a corner cabinet, but I think I've changed my mind. I'm just going to put shelves in the corner. And then with this set, I also found an oven hood, which ended up being a really huge mistake. Okay, so I got this vent cover and then I got two drawers. And then I got this great big long piece right here for $25 to make shelves. This was $20 and the drawers were $5 each. So I just saved myself close to a thousand dollars. Now, while I was there, I also found tile. So I got these tiles. They were 20 cents each for our kitchen remodel. And I think I have just enough. Well, here's the thing, when I measured, I need 120 and they had 115 not broken and then they had 10 broken. So hopefully I can squeeze it out. But this is a pretty common tile, so I think I can probably find matching ones at Home Depot. If not, I could put a flower tile or something in between just to fill in, but 20 cents each. Although he said they marked them wrong and they were supposed to be 40 cents each. And then I got the broken ones for 10 cents each. Yay, so that's a super good deal. So I was really getting, I felt like great deals. I thought I was saving a whole bunch of money, doing a really good job. And <laughs> so I was really on a roll finding pieces for the kitchen to help us save some money. Then they got started on the pantry and tearing the hallway out. 
to some major problems with our pantry that almost didn't make it happen. We had some vents that could not be moved. We had air conditioning vents and heater vents and it was a huge problem. So that took a whole lot of time to get the heater vents and the air conditioning vents situated and moved. We were able to move some of the heater vents and add new ones but it was a real process and that probably took us two days alone just to deal with that. And then we also had the problem of moving the electricity because our electric um, was hooked, our thermostat was hooked up to the electric in that wall and we were having a hard time getting it moved. <laughs> it was just a huge hassle. You wouldn't think all those little things, but those little things aren't so little and they really took up a huge amount. Can't walk through it. Big hole. I got. I can't walk through it, but I have a door, so I just have a big hole. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yay! Oh, that's so cool. Wow. So Mike's brilliant idea is brilliant again. <laughs> we had a moment of panic. Then they did get the wall up for the pantry, and then we made a new hallway going to our bedroom. Then we started the placement of the cabinets. When they took the cabinets out, they labeled them all, the ones that we were pretty sure we were keeping, and then the ones that we weren't keeping, they took out to the studio. And so that way we weren't getting confused on which cabinets were staying and going. And then we started placing the cabinets. So they brought all the cabinets back in after they tore everything down that were staying, they put them in order, went ahead and just set them in place to see if I was gonna like the arrangement. Now, for this great big thing here that had the double ovens in, they ended up just cutting off right here, just cutting off the top part of that cabinet. And I was just gonna keep that cabinet and just put countertop over the top of it. So that then I had a smooth countertop going all the way across. And then after all the hassle of trying to figure out where to put the refrigerator, we ended up leaving it in the same spot that it was to begin with. Then they started painting the cabinets. Now, I will tell you, they turned out really nice, but I will say that after watching them paint versus me rollering them, I will say that I'm not sure spray painting, or I mean, watching them spray versus me rolling them, I'm not sure that spraying actually saves any time or makes a better looking cabinet. Um, in the end, I ended up having to hand roller a few of them because we had some holes that we weren't expecting. We'll just talk about that later, about some mismeasuring and things like that. And so honestly, I know contractors and all of them are all big into spraying and everything, but I think my rollering looks just as good as their spraying. Okay, you can kind of see here, this is the one that I rollered and this is the one that they sprayed. And really, you can't tell any difference. So I don't know that it's worth the hassle of spraying your kitchen cabinets. Now, I will say that my contractors absolutely love Sherwin-Williams, so I went with them, <clears throat> and <laughs> I'm not really that impressed with Sherwin-Williams. The paint that I used for these kitchen cabinets was $120 a gallon, which in my mind is absolutely absurd, but I went ahead and tried it to see if it would be any better than just getting the cheapy stuff, and I am not impressed. It is super, super runny, it is super, super expensive, and I really just didn't find that it was anything spectacular for the Sherwin-Williams. Now, 
Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I have been painting for more than 30 years. I know my paint a little bit and it just really did not hold up to $120. I did not think at all. It didn't even hold up to $40. So anyway, for those of you who are asking, <clears throat> I did use Sherwin-Williams paint, but I was not impressed at all. Then they started getting the drywalls in and getting all of the beadboard in the, in the pantry and all that. And they painted, got the walls painted. Now, once again, I used Home Depot's bare paint, which was 40 or $45 a gallon. And I was not impressed with it either. And in the end, I ended up having to paint my entire living room and dining room because it was a different color now than the kitchen and it's all an open concept. So I needed to paint the living room and the dining room. So I ended up doing that also. But honestly, I was not impressed with Home Depot's paint either. Just for the kitchen and the pantry, we used primer and it still took five gallons, five gallons of bare paint for these two really tiny, small areas. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. When I painted other houses before, that maybe would have taken a maximum of two gallons. I have never used so much paint for one project. It was a huge waste of money. So I would not use Home Depot's bare paint and I would not use Sherwin-Williams cabinet paint. What did I end up using for the living room and dining room that I liked better? I went to the ReStore and they have their own brand of paint and it's $18 a gallon at my ReStore and that's the one that I ended up liking the best. It's thicker, it went on better, I didn't have to use as much paint and it was just a whole lot better paint than any of these other expensive paints. So we ended up getting everything painted and started putting the cabinets in and then we were starting to look like a real kitchen. Then as they were putting the cabinets in, I really liked the look in this picture of the white cabinets on top and the green on bottom, but then when the contractors put them on the wall, I really didn't like it. Okay, so the two of you have been working on this and it's lovely, but after it got put up Friday, I started noticing that the paint really didn't cover it all. Oh yeah. I mean, it's actually didn't cover it up. It's, yeah, we need another coat. Yeah. This is the white, the it. same white? Yeah, this is On the, the same white, so you can see it didn't cover, no, this this is the paint, this is the cabinet white. Oh. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, but, um, here's the thing. <laughs> I really don't like the white. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. What kind so, of, oh well. Wow. So, I think what I'm going to have you do, this is why we're painting by the hour, but <laughs> I think I'm going to have you paint it the same. Since we have to repaint it anyway, Yeah. I think I'm going to have you repaint the green, repaint it the green. Okay. But here's the thing. Let's not take them off the walls. All of these are going to be covered by stuff. All right. So let's just leave, just take the doors down. Yes. Yeah. and leave the cabinets up yeah, and just, just roller because none of the cabinets well maybe just a little bit on the bottom but that's yeah. not a big deal so let's yeah. not take the cabinets okay. down yeah. so we can do that by sponge yeah. Yeah. yeah and they were super super sweet about it the cabinets ended up needing to be repainted anyway because the lighting in my garage really was not that good so the coverage wasn't that great so the cabinets had to be repainted anyway and I was like, you know what? Since they have to be repainted anyway, let's just go ahead and do them green instead of white because I think I'm gonna like that better. And then we had the problem of the flooring. So when we took out the dishwasher, we had this hole in the flooring and I could not find the flooring to match. Thankfully, we live in a really small town and there was only two or three places you can get flooring and I called them and I found the place where the uh, owners before us had the flooring put in here, but, and they were very kind and they had the 
name and everything, but they didn't make that flooring anymore. So then I had to figure out how was I going to patch these places in front of the pantry and the trash can to match the flooring. And so I went on search for flooring. I looked and looked and looked, found all kinds of samples. I just didn't find anything I wanted. I really did not want just white, but in the end, I ended up just getting plain white. I really only have about eight feet that are going to be showing of the white tiles. So that's not going to be that difficult to clean. And in the end, I really liked the tiles and how they turned out. Then our next problem was the countertops. So I was originally going to go with just Formica countertops. And when I saw this picture of the butcher block countertops, I was like, wow, that really looks pretty. I don't like butcher block. It is a pain in the rear to keep up. You got to keep oiling it. You got to be careful with it. You can't cut on it. And I just, I don't use a cutting board. I just cut on my Formica countertops and I've never had an issue with it. And so I was just going to get Formica, but I really liked the look of the butcher block. I don't like granite. I don't like marble, none of that stuff. And so as I was looking, I thought, well, okay, maybe we could do the butcher block countertops. And I talked to the contractor and they said, oh yeah, we should be able to do that. Well, we ended up, I was going to epoxy over the old countertops, but... In the end, I liked the look of the butcher block enough. I thought, well, wait a minute. Could we epoxy the butcher block? And then that would be a little bit more maintenance friendly. And the contractor was like, oh yeah, sure. We could epoxy over it. That should be no problem. We ended up going, I was going to order countertops because like this corner and the island are not a standard size. We were going to have to piece butcher block together if I didn't order special a special size. Well, it was going to end up being several weeks to get a special size. So Mike and I went to Home Depot. We were just going to order countertops in Formica. But then when we saw the butcher block, we were like, well, actually that's nice. And the contractor said that they could piece them together. So this corner here took like three days to get pieced together. <laughs> it was a huge pain in the butt. <laughs> it was a huge pain. Poor Yaku. He worked so hard trying to get this together and he finally got it together, did a really good job on it. So we got the countertops in after three days, three full days worth of work. They were able to get the countertops in. This corner just created a nightmare because it's longer than the countertops come. And after we did that and we got it all in and they were getting ready to epoxy the night before I realized this drawer here is getting stuck now on the other drawers. So the cabinets shifted somehow. So don't know how to break the news to them tomorrow, but <laughs> somehow we will get it fixed. We might just shave some edges off of the front of the front of the uh, drawer there maybe oh boy it looked great got all the countertops we have to be going out of town for the weekend and it just coincided with the pour of the epoxy for the countertops because you can't really be moving around a lot because the dust will get into the epoxy and make little holes in your epoxy left town came back to beautifully poured countertops it was so shiny and pretty but i didn't want the shine because with the youtube videos we can't have shiny countertops because it'll reflect all the lights and everything and so i needed a mat well thankfully they had a matte top coat so they came and put the matte top coat on all right we came back from our trip to rapid city and they got the first layer on for the epoxy now it's really super shiny this is my table here that I worked on. And now they are going to be putting on the matte coating because if we we're going to shoot videos in here, we can't have it shiny because you can see how reflective that is. See, it would reflect everything in the camera. See, let's see. Well, this is a bad example, but it would we would be reflecting everything in there. So I'm gonna put a matte coating on now. Okay, so here's it before, right here, and you can see the difference the mat puts on there. 
Holy cow, that's totally different. Wow. That looks really good. I like the shiny. Yeah. But at the same time, I like the I matte. I like the matte. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which one looks nice at. Well, the matte looks like just a natural... Wood. Natural wood, yeah. yeah. I think that's why I like the matte better, actually, but... I like the shiny too. Also, while they were pouring the countertops, I found a kitchen table for $35. Our kitchen table is starting to sag. So we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. So I gotta get this to done today while it's 50 degrees. I think I'm gonna sand it down, redo the top. You can see it's got some marks and stuff. So I'm gonna get those sanded down. I sanded it down and had them epoxy that also while they were doing the countertops. And so I had a new kitchen table that was going to have an epoxy top that should hopefully last longer than my polyurethane one that didn't even last the first use when I did it. And so far it's been working really great. I love it. It turned out beautiful. It probably cost me about a hundred dollars in the end for this table to get it epoxied and everything. And so I'm super happy with the way it turned out. And then we have the window. Yeah. <laughs> so I really like looking outside into nature and all of that. And so I really wanted a big window, but when we went to go order the window, all of the guys were like, well, Tara, you want ventilation in the kitchen? I was like, well, I know, but I have, I have a window over here. Yeah, but you really want ventilation in the kitchen. So at this point I was getting so exhausted. I mean, I was having to make like a hundred decisions a day and my brain was just fried with decision making. I mean, decision fatigue was really on day two and we're into, I think about eight weeks, 10 weeks now. And <laughs> I was just absolutely exhausted from making decisions. So I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and get a little bit bigger window with, or I'll go ahead and get the bigger window with the side things that open and all that. It was $2,500 for this window. And instead of taking four to six weeks, it ended up taking, I can't remember if it was 10 or 12 weeks to get this window in. And in the meantime, in the middle of all this, our poor contractors also do snow removal. I don't know if it was the first or second snowiest winter that Wyoming's ever had. And our poor contractors like every two or three days, we're having to go plow snow and come back and work on our kitchen and then go plow snow and come back and work on our kitchen. So they got really delayed and really behind on the kitchen because they were having to do their snow plowing business, <clears throat> which normally here in Wyoming, it snows, but not that much. This was slowing us down. Well, the window got caught in one of these snowstorms for the delivery and it was two hours from our house and they turned it around and sent it back to Denver and then it was another week delayed. It was the most ridiculous thing. And so when the window finding came in, we were all excited. And Mike and I were at a school meeting that evening. Yaku had been here all day long working on the window, him and his helper. And him and Izzy were just working and working and working, getting this. He's like, I'm getting this window in today. I'm going to be done with this window because this window ended up being a huge pain in the patootie. And so he worked until 8.30 or 9 that night. I think it was around 8.30 that night. And we came home from the school meeting. And Mike and I were both like, uh, this is not at all what we wanted. And I felt absolutely awful because Yaku had worked so hard getting this window in. To say I was a little bit upset is an understatement. <laughs> both Mike and I were really, really disappointed. Now... I totally get this is first world problems. I understand that. But for the amount of money that we are spending on this, this is one thing I really didn't want to compromise on. And yet I did. And it's my own darn tune fault. I shouldn't have done it. We had looked into getting just trying to sell this one on upcycle because I can't return it and getting a big picture window ordered. But this is April. 
And if we ordered it today, it would be September. They think it might be September. This one was two months late. So we're talking November or December before I get it. And so as we were sitting there looking to order a big picture window and he told me it would be September and I knew it would be November or December. I just was like, nope, I'm done. We'll just live with it. Wrap it up. The rest of the kitchen is really nice. Um, and so it's just one of those things that you just have to kind of suck up in life. So anyway, we got the window, but as Dave <laughs> likes to say when he's having a moment, he says, well, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. <laughs> we love our Dave. Um, so anyway, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined, but life will go on. And I was so numb, I couldn't even cry, but it really was not what I wanted at all. I was so mad at myself for giving in and not just getting the big picture window that I wanted. And so the next morning, Mike sent me this cartoon, which pretty much expressed our feelings at this point of the remodel. So I then spent all Monday, I literally called every glass shop in Sheridan, Billings, Gillette, Casper, trying to find a big picture window that somebody may have misordered and they just had sitting somewhere and I just couldn't find anything. And so finally Mike's like, okay, let's just chuck the window. We couldn't return it, non-returnable. Anderson window, really nice $2,500 Anderson window. Now it's just literally chucked. And so we went and found another glass shop here in town and they were able to get my picture window in four weeks for $600. Yeah, to say I was ticked was an understatement. So we went ahead and said, we'll just flush the $2,500 on the other window. You know, I just really wanted that big picture window. So we flushed that, started waiting again, they kept coming and working on the cabinets. And then we kept having little problems like this. Okay, so here is our next kitchen disaster. Somehow these cabinets shifted and now we can't get the sliding drawers in, which wouldn't be such a big deal, except that the cabinets are all together and epoxied, literally an eighth of an inch is all it shifted. We just cannot believe it. Okay, Yaku, show me. We have overcome. We have overcome. The drawers. Ah. Oh, beautiful. Ah. Beautiful. Ah. Very good. Yay. Oh my goodness. There are days. Yaku yes. and I keep agreeing it's the little things. It's the little things. <laughs> We kept fixing the little things and poor Yaku was about ready to tear his hair out. He kept forging along. They had such a good attitude about it. They were so nice. Even when we made changes, they were just really super good about working with the changes. And even when we had problems like this microwave cabinet, the microwave was supposed to sit in this cabinet, but when we hung it on the, or held it up to the wall, it stuck out awful. I mean, it just closed off the entire kitchen. And so I was like, this is not going to work. And it really frustrated me because I was just going to put two shelves up there for a hundred dollars and be done with it. That cabinet ended up costing us probably 1500 that dollars. Put it, made the cabinet. It didn't work. Remade the cabinet. Still didn't work remade it a third time, it still didn't work. So then we started cutting out the wall to get it to sit back into the wall. We had to tear out the wall and we're gonna sink it back in there and hope that that makes it a little bit more flush with the rest of the cabinets so it doesn't stick. 
almost 10 inches, not quite 10 inches, let's see, like eight inches out into the, it really blocked off the whole room. And this dumb microwave cabinet was the biggest, I mean, we just kept running into things like this all the time. And so what should have been a hundred dollar fix ended up costing like $1,500 at least. By the time I spent all this labor, I could have just ordered a cabinet. And I'm gonna do a video on kitchen remodel mistakes, but let me tell you, one of the big mistakes I did was trying to work around the old cabinets. And I'll explain in that video, but really that was a huge money waster for us. So then I got the brilliant idea to use my old 1920s farm sink that I had found on Upcycle for $100. I got the base and the sink for $100. We put it in the studio. Mike worked and worked and got it in the studio. And then I was like, oh my goodness, that would look so cute in the kitchen. So the contractors were like, okay, well, yeah, we can do that. So we ended up I had to clean out all of the old contact paper and stuff like that. They could have done it, but there was no reason to pay them to do that when I could do it. And so I got it all cleaned out. They put a rust preventer on it, sprayed it with the rest of the cabinets. Then the guys had the chore of getting this thing in. And let me tell you, it was a booger. We got it in, they could not get it leveled, couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Oh, I get to recapture the moment again. Aren't you excited? Oh yeah, watch the fingers. If we don't amputate any fingers, this will be a good night. It'll be a good night. <laughs> oh, what's a 350 pound sink every now and then? It's more than that. 500 this is not as easy as Yaku makes it look. Okay, all right, the, the pop deck. So yeah. pops, pops, pops. Pipes in the middle. Pipes. Pipes. Okay, good. Set of fingers and... it's in. No. Oh, no! Wait, is it actually in on the front? Feels like it. It's in. No! Now it's worse. Oh, seriously? So maybe it's the same. So the cabinet is actually levels. I think it's, it's this is the one that's actually doing that. <laughs> So I don't know if that's on purpose, that they did that for it to... I like that idea. <laughs> Alright, let me... Okay, Mike. Holy moly. Uh, Jack. Jack. Yeah. You need to pull shims. <clears throat> so right in that corner there, there's a brown, brown shim. Right there. Oops. Alright. Should we both grab it? Right. Wait, hold on. I know it's there. So right in this corner. Oh, right. yeah. You see it? Okay. Put one on each side, right? Yeah. I can see you don't want to carry the sink again. <laughs> no, I don't want to carry the sink again. Okay, and then there's one on that side as well. Yep. Oh, I can't see it. It should be right in the front. Wow. And that's a lot, and we need to fix that because of the kind wait, of top. You wait, the sink. The wait, the sink top isn't in the base correctly. There's no lip on the front. There's no lip on the front, am I? It just was not getting level. So finally they realized the cabinet was, had a little, the cabinet was kind of made wrong. And so they had to make some adjustments, adjustments and got that leveled, but wow, that was a pain. So then as soon as we got the sink in, we filmed this. Oh, we are 95% done with the kitchen remodel. Yay. And it's kind of weird feeling. I thought we were gonna be going into next week still. And now all we have to do is get the big window in. So we are 95% done. It's coming along nicely, finally. <laughs> and we can actually start using it like next week as soon as we get it cleaned up. And we went to a marriage conference today, so we're still married. <laughs> so I have to say, now that, I, now that it's mostly done, pretty much done, I'm glad we did it. But it's very anticlimactic. It was like when we paid off the house, it was like, 
Okay, stress, 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 stress. Oh, it's done. Is your stress done then? Mine's not gone down yet. Well, mine's not gone down yet, but it's just kind of weird that it's done, so I don't have to be stressed about it. Yeah, yay. Unfortunately, I didn't deal very well with this remodel. Mm. I thought I thought I would deal very well. I think I had post-traumatic remodeling syndrome from when I was a child. I think that was my problem. <laughs> And we only did it because Tara was going to chop the top of the bar off for the chainsaw. And I didn't think that was a good uh, idea. Right. I'm wondering if I should have just let her. <laughs> All right, guys. So here's the reveal of the entire kitchen done. And little did we know, our 95% done wasn't even close. We filmed that three and a half or four months into the project. And we honestly thought we were like there. Needless to say another two to three months later, because actually we're still not done with the kitchen as I'm filming this, but we just have to get this video out. So, <laughs> so then at this point, we are extremely over budget. And I'm gonna do a video on how much the kitchen remodel cost us, but we were extremely over budget. And at this point we were like, okay, we've got to stop the bleeding. We're just gonna have to do the rest of these things ourselves because we can do it ourselves. The, the contractors need to be doing their landscaping anyway. We're into May, the end of May, June. And so then Mike started working on the sink and he could not get the old drain out. We're talking six hours he worked on this drain. How much do you love your wife? Uh, apparently a lot. <laughs> I would say a thousand kabillion times. Yes. So I'm having to grind the rust off of the drain. We hope. With a diamond tipped Dremel. We've tried using, it's, it's rust, this drain work. piece it's is rusted in. And we can't get it out. We've tried acid, we've tried sledgehammering, we've tried all sorts of things and it just does not want to let go of this sink. So this morning I used a Dremel like this and it ate the blade, but I made it maybe 10% of the way through. So I bought some diamond blades now. All right, here we go. Did, were you glad I bought you diamonds, honey? Oh, thanks for buying me diamonds. I bought you diamonds for your sink. <laughs> now that's the true love of a husband. <laughs> Ugh. We have to record this for posterity, my love. Diamond blades are our friends. <laughs> Let's hope we didn't actually cut okay, the actual sink. Okay, so I sink. just out of curiosity tapped it again and it actually came loose. Okay, so let's see what the verdict is. <gasps> it was rust. Oh my goodness. You prefer your diamonds at the edge of, of <laughs> tools a of a Dremel. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. I bought four of those diamond tips because I thought it would eat them up. But man, that one <sighs> diamond tip alone did this whole project. Oh my goodness. That's pretty goodness. amazing. So then after they got in the big window, we had this huge hole. And I was like, what in the world happened? Oh my goodness. What have you done to my house? We have a big hole in our house. Okay, so now I have no idea how we got so off, but this window was supposed to end at the end of the sink when we measured everything. Well, originally, so I don't know. The sink to here, the problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird having a sink the well, window hang over, but because the ceiling is right here. Oh, we're just messing around. Because the uh, because the kitchen is right here, it looks like it goes slightly into the next room. Yeah. We but. What's up, Izzy? But we. Uh, oh, oh, Tar. Really oh, thank you. is that the it tamale? Is. The tamale. <gasps> no thank way. Thank you, Izzy. Okay, hold on. This is a real Mexican tamale, isn't it? Wait, wait. You gotta take out. I you gotta know. take it out of the wrapper. But I didn't want to dump stuff everywhere. Here, let me take it. Oh, that's good. All right, I am not exaggerating when I say we measured this window at least a hundred times. I mean, there was probably six of us measuring this window a hundred times. Have no idea how we got it so far off of the sink. It was supposed to end at the sink, but thankfully it's exactly 12 inches and I have a 12 inch cabinet left 
and a 15 inch piece of countertop left. So guess what? They're coming back to finish up the molding tomorrow and he's gonna cut that down for me and cut out the baseboard so I can get my countertop in there. I am so excited. We're getting so close. So thankfully I found that cabinet and I got it painted and got it put in and they came and finished the epoxy on the other part of the countertops and my cabinets, they left the drawers in, the epoxy seeped through and epoxied my drawers shut. Yeah. I mean, they had that thing so sealed. I have no idea how the epoxy leaked. I really don't, but it did. So then I had to chisel my drawers apart, scrape off the epoxy, repaint them. <laughs> and I got those. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was one thing after another. So then as soon as Yaku was done getting the kitchen installed and getting the new, he got the new window in, got the new, uh, got the sink in. We were all excited and then as we were cleaning off the island from him being here, I discovered the island and all the cabinets had cracked where the seams were. We are down to the last 2%. Mike is trying to get the sink put in. I was clearing off the countertop from when the contractor was here yesterday. And I noticed where the countertop seam is joined, the whole entire thing has cracked all the way down, clear through the epoxy. I don't know how they're gonna fix that. I'm not going to cry, but we were so close. So what happened was when I talked to the contractor, he did not put dowels in. And so it sounds like um, he probably should have put dowels in. We thought that it would be supported enough because there's, the seams are all supported by the countertops or I mean by the cabinets. So he was thinking that, you know, that would be enough probably to hold it on. Um, they are more than willing to come in and fix it. And um, they've been really nice about it. I feel really bad. But um, those are not, it's not fixed yet. And so we're still waiting because they're right in the middle of their landscaping and lawn mowing and stuff. And so they're going to come in and fix that later. But we thought we were done. <laughs> and now we're not. And then there was a whole bunch of little things needed to fix. Couldn't was having a hard time getting them fixed. Finally, we're figuring out solutions for like this hole where the ballast, where the bulkheads were and that type of thing. So we got those little things fixed. And then we filmed this. Okay, so we're having kind of a hard moment here. This is kind of weird. So the countertop is still messed up. The windows trim and stuff isn't done and we don't have the tile, but technically- No, we don't have the refrigerator turned on. <laughs> Oh, Whoops. we don't have the refrigerator. But technically we can start using the kitchen. Yep. But I keep finding myself going into our master bathroom to get water in my cup. We're going downstairs. Going I got downstairs gotta... to get something. <laughs> so I guess, do we go ahead and bring everything upstairs and start using the kitchen? So we do have, the sink is running now upstairs and the dishwasher and the drains and the electric is all on and the microwave works. It's mostly just the split countertop at the moment. That's the main issue. And we thought we might've figured out a possible shortcut. We'll have to see. So this is just kind of weird because it doesn't feel like we should be able to use it yet. It's not an HGTV moment. No. <laughs> And plus, I haven't quite recovered because they're going to take me away. Oh, <laughs> the money farm! <laughs> we need a multi-family member discount for that one. Let me tell you. I think we're all going to go. I just want to sit out on a, a patio somewhere with a big scene out there. Actually, we kind of have that part. And just paint and have the nurse occasionally come and give me my meds and some, something to drink. 
<laughs> now we have this glorious kitchen and we don't want to cook. Yeah. <laughs> we have a glorious kitchen, but it destroyed us getting here. So now we're all shattered and we can't do anything. <laughs> Only our English friends will get that. <laughs> yes. This is a moment. I am putting the first dish in the new dishwasher. It's a moment. Do you feel the moment happening? Dave? Sure. We're sharing a moment, Dave. <laughs> Work with me, Dave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we have little irritations like that hole right there. We could not figure out to save us how to do that. Found this floor molding and I held it up there and put an outline for the back so that I can cut it and it should fit exactly up there. And Mike got the sink faucet in. It was a really cool sink faucet. And we were like, this water tastes awful. So we flushed and flushed it. I mean, I we ran it for hours. Like hours we flushed this faucet. And it was tasting awful. Something was wrong with the faucet that we put in. Cute faucet. Awful faucet from Glacier Bay. And so... um Mike had to change out the faucet, so we put in the old faucet that we had, which we liked just fine. Okay, we are having a moment. Oh. What do you think of the moment? I'm glad I said. <laughs> no, I think Not it's Not there, it's but we're getting good. close. It's looking good, yeah. Mike replaced the faucet today because the Glacier Bay faucet from Home Depot piece of junk was poisoning us and was a piece of junk so we put our old faucet back in which we may not keep forever but for now it works great yeah it worked fine yeah, they had metal shavings in the old faucet we they were a, trying to kill us all tasted but. like metal then we got the frame around the window we got trim underneath the counters yeah a couple more projects and we'll be done we got a handsome dude eating mom's bread that she left in the hour some for very some very good uh <laughs> homemade bread from our dining on time cookbook <laughs> I sort of forgot it. It's delicious it bread. It doubles as a hammer if you have a nail that's sticking out of the wall slightly. I uh, left it in the oven for three hours. <laughs> Oops. Actually, what's funny is it really doesn't look that bad. Like it's, it's not actually bad. It's burned on the bottom, although I kind of like it like uh, that. But so inside, what... it's real soft here, and it's kind of crunchy on the outside. So <laughs> bread that's been cooked three hours, that's what it looks like. I think it's funny how it has this little gap, like air was going through there. That's because I did it. <laughs> and then we had to put in the kitchen light and oh my goodness what a pain mike had about this much space up in the attic because it was right against the wall of course his knee still is not healed so he was climbing up there in a lot of pain no space can hardly breathe of course with all the insulation and everything and so he was putting that up and it was a huge pain. <laughs> what the heck is this? I just pulled out of the ceiling. <laughs> it looks like one of those uh, trays for the meat market. <laughs> is, ah! That, ah! <laughs> is that the insulation? <laughs> no, no, the insulation. The weird thing is there's insulation well, on only one my side. My, I mean, not my... Say hello, dear. Hello. Who is how's, that? How's it going? Not so great. I'm like stuck in a really weird position and I've been up here for a while and breathing <coughs> weird okay. stuff. And... Do I need to call 911? <laughs> not yet, but if I need to step here five more minutes, maybe so. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mike's words of wisdom. Mike's words of wisdom. <sighs> uh, sometimes. It's a good thing you don't know what the experience is going to be like until you're in it. Because <coughs> I never would have come up here if I had known what this is going to be like. Well, oh my! A warning to all husbands. Yeah, although to be honest, I have to say, yeah, she says this warning to all husbands. Yes. Although I have to say, at least I didn't crawl through razor wire with gunfire coming at me. But wow, for a civilian job, <laughs> this is pretty rough. <laughs> He must love me a lot. 
What? It's pretty bad. I, I don't think Dad is gonna ever do this again, do you? <laughs> I think I owe Dad really, really big time. <laughs> you owe him about 150 tamales. 150 tamales? You think that's enough? <laughs> I don't know, maybe 1,005. 1,050. I think 1,000 is more like it. Oh, that can't be good. That's only the vent. The vent is flexible. Okay, maybe we should go check the ladder. Do you need Jack to come pull you out? Perhaps. <laughs> Tell him I said mayhaps. <coughs> You're the best husband ever. Yeah. I think tonight is a, <coughs> a four coconut ice cream bar night. <laughs> four coconut ice cream bar night. And you need me to massage your legs? Yes. I sure hope I didn't forget anything, because if I did, it's staying up here for the rest of our lives. Tom Cruise can do it, I can do it. <laughs> okay, hold on, Jack. I'm gonna have to hand you something. I'm gonna have to hand you something. Okay, ears, the back, back. <laughs> Flashlight. Jack, just remember, it's better to remain single than to get married, according to Paul, in the Bible. You say that to Jack, you said? Yes. Oh, my. You got it? Oh. Oh. Holy moly. That was rough. He's alive. <sighs> you made it. It was bloody hot up there. Oh, sorry. It was hot up there. <laughs> Yikes. That was bad. That was really, really bad. <laughs> well, it was a little easier than I thought getting to that side of the house. But once I got there, I had to operate in a space about this top <coughs> with well, stuff flying all around me. I should have had some kind of mask, but those regular white masks don't really <laughs> do a lot to keep that stuff out. And it was really, really hot. And I was thinking, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to make this work. And today was one of the coolest days of the year in June. Oh. Yeah, but it was still 100 in the attic. I should have given you my little uh, cool thing. Your mini, you yeah, your put around That would have been neck. nice. And it was nice passing stuff through to you, but before I hammered that box into place, <coughs> I should have passed more of it through so I wouldn't have to carry it all back. The main yeah. thing is I couldn't see where the, the um, rafter bottom pieces were, and I didn't want to put my knee or something else through or your whole body through the drywall <laughs> yeah i was holding up the drywall to uh, make sure you didn't poke through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay that adventure is over oh, thank goodness so what if i tell you it's in the wrong spot <laughs> too bad <laughs> it ain't moving now okay here we go ready <laughs> yay although there's only one bulb on it <laughs> that was a little anticlimactic i guess Oh, well, actually, maybe the other belts just aren't on. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. <laughs> Yay. Woohoo! Okay, that looks really good. Thank you, it Dave. It was definitely worth it. Do you think it was worth it, dear? I love you, honey. <laughs> I know you do. I must love you, honey. A lot. <laughs> Wow. Well, the part we it had looks to do good. today was a lot easier than the part from the other day, so I'm feeling a little more chipper now. This is my <laughs> birthday, anniversary, Mother's Day gifts for the next 20 years. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're paid up. And we finally got the light put up. Now, what do we have left? Well, we have to put the tile in. We can't put the tile in until they fix the countertops. And... They need to fix the countertops. So they need to fix the countertops and the tile and then we'll be done. But who knows how long that's going to take. I mean, it could take one weekend or it could take a month. It depends on if they have to strip the countertops and all of that. And so um, we still have that left to do. But I couldn't wait any longer because I just know you guys want to see the kitchen reveal. So here is the official <laughs> before 
and after of our kitchen remodel. <laughs> stay tuned. I'm doing a couple of videos on how I organized and decorated my kitchen. And then I'm also doing a video on how much our kitchen remodel cost and kitchen remodel mistakes. So watch for those videos. In the meantime, you can go watch my pantry video where we made the pantry and then my other one where I organized and decorated my pantry. Please visit us at livingonadying.com. We'll see you guys next time.